Hello fellow Hunters, today we're going to be doing a video on why I think Bloodborne is one of the best games ever made. And now as you continue the video you might think I'm a little bit biased and yeah, you, you'd be damn well correct. I absolutely adore and love this game and I'm so happy to be talking about it. Um, I love doing Bloodborne content so if you'd like to see more let me know. Anyway, I'll let you all get on with the video now. See you in the next segment, bye. The first thing I'll talk about is the weapons. Oh my life, the weapons. Well, not as many as some other other From Software games. The variety inside the weapons and their moveset is amazing. Sometimes, when you transform an attack, well, transform a weapon, they can change to completely different weapons. I mean, like, Chicago, for example. It's one-handed. Well, it doesn't change that much. Or... Well, but it does. It changes into this blood blade. I mean, blood blade. I know it might seem like I'm overreacting, but it's just, it's just so cool to me. I mean, you literally plunge yourself, or the blood letter. You literally go from like a mace. You stab yourself with it, and then you pull out, pull it out, and there's just this stick of your flesh, and it's just all everywhere, and you slam into the ground. You get frenzy, and then. Simon's Blowblade. Don't get me started on goddamn Simon's Blowblade. Also, you can take away health. Simon's Blowblade, it goes from a curved sword to a goddamn bow. A bow. It goes to a goddamn bow. A bow. A bow. And it shoots arrows. And it just spin attack with the spinny thing. Oh god, it's so goddamn cool. I mean, you back pedal when you're attacking, you back pedal, you shoot the arrows, the quick attack transform and then don't give me started on like on the holy sword. Oh my life. Look at this. Look, like what? Look, like what? Look look at this. I mean, you literally shoot out projectiles. I know, yeah, but this is def I know that it's in previous games, but this is definitely the best iteration of the Moonlight like great sword. It's so, 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 so goddamn cool. And I love it, love it, love it. Love it, love it. I mean, look, I'm throwing projectiles everywhere, like in previous games, obviously, but then there's like the, the light up thing of the when you start the Moonlight like great sword animation. Ah, oh, so goddamn cool. The bosses. <laughs> the bosses. But the bosses in this game are like goddamn coffee. They're too good for this world. They weren't meant to be. They were meant for a more stable and better world. I mean, take Lady Maria, Ludwig, German, just the whole entourage. Oh my god. I mean, look, look, look at me. I, I mean, Lady Maria is my favourite boss in the series. Um, Ludwig, German, German's flying around with his siphon. He's going whoosh, 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 whoosh. Making tornadoes going everywhere. And I mean, Maria just decides, you know what? I'm gonna become a vile blood again, and just stabs herself with swords, and she like, and then she's flowing blood flames everywhere. There's fire going over, there's blood going over, there's splatting everywhere, and then, I, and then after that, I get her cool sword from two, two sad, two um, fishing guys, fishing sharks. God rest everyone's soul who fought those fishing sharks. God bless your soul. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm praying right now. Because I feel really bad for you. But then again, I did fight them as well. But besides the point, such cool goddamn bosses. I mean, and then there's a Ludwig theme. Do, no, do, do, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting it now. Oh, it's getting out of my head. The Ludwig theme, so good, so good. And then the, the Maria theme as well. And then the German theme. And then the scenery, the background, the clock ticking, out, everything. I've just had a look back on some of the recording and I realised that I've been fanboying a bit about you know, some of the stuff and a bit reacty. I'm really sorry about that everyone. <laughs> sorry, I just really, really, really love Bloodborne. If you are new, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. Only if you enjoy though. If you hate the video, please let me know so I can improve the content. You don't have to subscribe again. I'll say that again. You don't have to subscribe. It's completely up to you. The lore. I love the lore. I, I'm just going to say like everything else about this game. And all from software games. I love the, the story. And in any game, I always love when it has a really good story. And when Bloodborne... It does not disappoint about learning the eldritch truth and comprehending what humans were never meant to comprehend in the first place. Or as you discover and gain insight about 
multiple great ones, beings on a higher plane of existence. Such a cool story. And not to mention how when the healing shirts found this blood, they ingested it into themselves and became abhorrent beasts. Like Ludwig, for example. The reason he's so big is because of how powerful he was. And that, well, I'm pretty sure that's the lore at least. And oh my god, he, he, he pulls a holy more like great sword out of his. Uh, uh, it's just such. So cool lore. And I mean, I think my favourite bit of the lore, well, not the favourite, but a really cool moment was finding the note in Old Yarnum where it talks about oh where it goes are oh, we left no other choice but to let it all burn to cinders or, or something like that it's been a while but oh my life such a cool like line oh god damn it such a cool goddamn fight sorry sorry but it just is I'm not gonna lie to you and if you disagree with me I'll fight you at Nightmare Frontier a duel password 432 one all right the PvP. The PvP in this one is by far my favourite in the whole of the From Software's games. I have not played Dark Souls 3 or Dark Souls 2's PvP, but I've heard in their heyday that they were really, really fun. But for me at least, the combat feels absolutely amazing. Dodging around your foes at lightning speed, slashing weapons while... The like say, me using my bow blade, I'll go in for a hit, transform, back pedal, shoot an arrow out, boom, boom, parry them, and then, uh, and then, not to mention how, I know for some reason, I didn't find this out until recently, apparently the Soul, the From Software community has a bit of a stigma about, like, gatekeeping, but, uh, but when I've played Bloodborne, because that's the community I've most engaged with, They've been. I've only encountered nice people. Everyone bows when they when you're doing a duel. Everyone's gone. I mean, like I had this encounter. I'll put it on screen. I sat. I sat doing the make contact emote. This guy invaded me. We invaded for like an hour straight. Like I kept invading. He'd invade me, and I'd just like do the make contact on the wall. I mean, it was just a, such a cool moment. And I've never had something like that happen in a different game. I mean, it was just, it was so funny. Um, and I absolutely love it. I absolutely love the PvP in this game. Just everything about it is just absolutely phenomenal. The interconnected world and exploring the world. Now, I know it's not as interconnected as, say, Dark Souls 1. But, for example, Cathedral Ward <laughs> leads to most places. You, it's like a hub, sort of. Well... A second hub because let's all be honest hunter's dream is obviously the hub but as well as for exploring the area there's so many little nooks and crannies that can hold so many different secrets and a good example would be canehurst you have to go to forbidden woods off a side little passageway then you have to make your way into a a little like section that i didn't know was there until my, my a few playthroughs in and after you've walked through there, you have to climb through this swamp with tons of giant guys that look really mean and scary. And then once you've got through there, you have to go to the Zephyr's Clinic, get a Cainhurst invitation, which is weirdly addressed to you. I think the Cain, I think we're somehow related to Cainhurst. That's just my fun theory. But after that, you go to after you then kill the Witches of Hemwick, and then you kill, and then and then you go to the Hemwick Channel Lane in there and there's a massive mausoleum thing and then you get to go to Canis. You see what I mean? That's like the best area, one of the best areas in the game is hidden behind all that. Such cool level design. I, I, I just I love, all of it. I love all of it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So, so, so cool. So cool. Cathedral Ward also serves as a sort of hub for NPCs. As if you've played the game, you'll know you've got the the prostitute, the crazy blood lady that kills the prostitute if you and that. There's the there's the Karen. Well, not Karen, but a really mean old lady. There's a untrustworthy bloke. There's the the guy that eats people and calls you a beast. Yeah, he's a bit of a chump too. There's also the Odin Chapa Dweller, and I'm going to be honest with you all, I smashed some pots around him, and I thought he had been killing all those people on my first playthrough. 
so I slew him. I, I killed him. I feel I felt bad about it after I realised after my first playthrough that he was actually it's like a that it was just like some incense or something. But I, I thought he had been killing all the men like that were, those were his trophies. As you continue your journey through Yarnum, you'll find a manner of disgusting creatures around every corner. And as the game goes on and you gain more insight and eyes on the inside, you start to come to understand what you weren't meant to understand. And that leads you to see things like the amygdala, or at the very end of the game, confront the moon presence. The enemies in this game are, in my opinion, so cool. I mean, I might not like the snakes, but the design is so cool, and as well, the, the snakes popping out of the guy's head, like exploding outwards. Zuli the Witch, I suggest you reckon, watch her videos, did a cool video showing the slow-mo of the effects popping out, and it's really, really cool. Not to mention some of the other bosses. While I don't like the brain suckers, and to be honest, I absolutely hate them, their design is also very, very cool. It's the same with most other bosses, and like the ones in the research hall, not the research, yeah, the research hall, Lady Maria's, but the area that you fight Lady Maria, all the patients and the ones that are crawling around in tight white vests, so cool, and really well done boss designs and enemy designs, and I absolutely love it. Well, that is the end, everyone. I hope you did enjoy. Before you go, I just wanted to say thank you to the people that suggested that I continue well, I'll just start playing Sekiro again. I've just beat Genichiro. Such a cool boss fight. I'm looking forward to playing the rest of it. There is going to be some videos and a playlist popping up on screen. And yeah. May you all find your worth in the waking world. Au revoir everyone.